it's Let's time. It. Okay. All right. Well, everybody's looking really good today. We just want to welcome you all to the Global Watch International Call. It's Tuesday, April 13th, 3 p.m. Jerusalem time. This is the evening prayer. And today's meeting is being hosted by the Russia Watch, led by the awesome Katya from <laughs> Russia. And so, uh, Susan, do you have anything you want to add before we turn it over to Katya? Oh, no, she's on. Oh, no, we're excited. We know that God's going to do amazing things during this hour. So we just bless you and your team, Katya. And we just say it's going to be a, a, a great and awesome hour. And we're all going to be different when we leave this hour than we came in. In Yeshua's name. Go ahead, Katya. Amen. I'm sure we're all going to be different. I'm absolutely convinced. Hi, everyone. Um, I have so much joy today, really. Um, and I'm sure that it will be passed on to very many, to all of us and people who will be watching this. You know, preparing this, I started uh, re revising or listening to the prophecies about Russia and reading them. And I can't believe how much confidence and joy and hope there is. Thank God for prophecies. And I want to, uh, to read to you this scripture because we will we'll mostly share things from experience, more like testimonies or uh, things that we would like you to know about our nation. But this scripture, I asked God, give me at least one scripture. We're supposed to have the Bible. And he gave me this scripture. It's 2 Peter 1.21. I'm sure you love this one. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And we will be carried along by the Holy Spirit with you today, as well as others were. And um, I'm very happy that our team is with us. Will you, all those from Russia, uh, can you wave, wave? I mean, maybe it's me in the screen, but um, I'm so glad we're doing this together. And the Lord uh, lifted us up and I felt that, you know, in the body of Christ, we need to know each other. Last time our theme was uh, to know each other by the spirit, not by the flesh as nation knows nation. So um, I hope to, today some of that will happen to a greater extent. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are here. We are gathered in your name. There's more than two of us and you're here. So we ask you to speak through us what is important and what is not important, let not come out of my mouth and everyone else's Lord. Lead us as you please. You are our leader, Jesus. You are our King and our Lord. And we honor you and worship you today together as the body, your body, Jesus. Amen. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about the history of Christianity or uh, the church or believers in Russia, because um, I think many people in other nations uh, don't know much about it. And uh, some people that I uh, met with thought that it all came in the 90s of the 20th century, and it came a long time ago. And I'm sure you know about Kirill and Mephodi in Russian, Cyril and Methodius in English, they, they invented the Cyrillic alphabet. So these people translated the Bible into our language in the ninth century, long before uh, Martin Luther, uh, Jan Gus, Jan Gus, or how do you say it? Long before in Europe, anything like that started happening. They were Slavs. Mm, some people say they were Bulgarian, um, others' uh, opinions differ, but they're uh, very known people in history. They were missionaries from uh, Byzantium, and we even had no alphabet. So when they addressed the Pope in Rome to translate the Bible into another language, that was unheard of, just unheard of. Um, the, they, uh, they asked them, well, do you have at least uh, um, a written language? Oh, they said, no problem, we will invent one. And so they did. And so that's how the Cyrillic uh, happened for translating the Bible. And as um, 
people who work in uh, Wycliffe translators, they all say that since the Bible is translated in a certain nation, that nation never stays the same because somebody reads it and people were reading it and things were happening. So that was back in the ninth century. Mm. Uh, and then there was, of course, the baptism of Russia in the end of the, it was 1998, I think, end of the 10th century. And the prince baptized everyone. It's a long story, I won't go into detail, but uh, Vladimir, uh, Prince Vladimir, who was the ruling, uh, the ruler in Kiev, which was, we were one nation then, Ukraine, Russia, there's, there was no difference. It was one nation. And he baptized uh, people, very many people. And we have prayed into this, that many of it was done not through faith, but by force. But on the other hand, I think if they had the Bible by then for more than a century, I'm sure there were some people who read the Bible who wanted to do this. And so the Orthodox Church was always the predominant church in Russia. And many of these things were new for me. And I'm a uh, Christian, you know, I don't consider myself uh, belonging to a certain denomination. I'm just a follower of Jesus. And I didn't know many of these things in history because they were hidden from us, they were concealed. And then I realized that in the Orthodox Church, there were very many movements of reform, reform, to reform the church. And of course, they were persecuted by the main church that was into a lot of uh, pagan practices and all kinds of things. But they were big. Some of them were mentioned during 100 years, like Strigolniki. They wouldn't build um, buildings. They would put up a cross, gather around the cross, preach the gospel. And they went and convicted the priests of the things that were, they were doing very wrong, not according to the word. And they read the word. They were people of the word. And there were many of those reform movements. And each one of them was persecuted. And then the reform movement stopped. And it's, it, there was a big split in the 1600s. And after that uh, split, there were no more reform movements, but more splits, more and more splits in the church. But most of the church, the Orthodox church, was actually the institution that was persecuting the real church. So that went on and on. And in 1874, there was a big revival in St. Petersburg. And it was a full-blown revival for 10 years and then went on a little bit less. It was among the aristocracy the people who knew the king, the Tsar personally, among the richest and the noble people in Russia. And Lord Redstock was the first person to bring the gospel there. But in St. Petersburg, already there were some uh, ladies of the higher aristocracy who have received Christ and the soil was very ready. And there are disputes among historians whether this was a, um, a revival brought in from uh, abroad or was it on our soil uh, grown? And I think it was both because th there was, a, people were searching for God in those years. There were very many revolutionary movements because people were, you know, they knew something is wrong with our society. So, so people went into that and other people went into Christianity and started believing Christ. And they were very rich people and they transformed, they built, you know, hospitals, uh, uh, schools for the poor, they went there. They went to the prisons, they went to the poor areas. People who had balls in ballrooms with the king's family. And, and it was God's, it was God's answer to the, the poor state of the, the people in Russia. He said, this is what I can do. That's what God said. I can take the noble, the richest people, and use them to bless the all the people, you know, the poor, the, the peasants, the workers. And if that revival hadn't stopped, because it, it, it went on till the revolution of 1917, but it wasn't a revival anymore, it was pockets and groups of people. If that hadn't been stopped by the Tsar's government, we would not have the communist revolution of 1917. That's what God said to me. And I'm, I, I'm sure that that was 
God speaking, because it was the problem that the communists tried to resolve without God. So we will make people equal. That was their theology. We will make the poor and the rich the same. But God was doing it through the gift of mercy, the gift of giving through people. They planted churches in every palace, in every um, wherever they were, mansions, and they had fields and areas in Russia and different parts of Russia, and everyone became a church. So that went on till the revolution. The revolution came, communists came to power, and this is something many people in Russia don't know, many believers. The church, born again church, was not specifically persecuted till 1928. So from 1917 till 28, the church was growing. Hundreds of churches were planted during the, the hardest years, the years of civil war, the years of revolution, the years of famine. I'll tell you why. Because in the Tsarist uh, times, they were both uh, communist revolutionaries, we call them, who were against the Tsar. And uh, Protestants were persecuted by the government, the Tsar's government. So they were buddies. They would be in prison together. The, the future communists who were not communists then, they were just revolutionaries. And born again Christians were persecuted. So when uh, the Tsar was overthrown, they thought, you know, we had a common enemy. So it was a hard time and many people were killed, but it wasn't aimed at the Christian church. The Orthodox church was very much persecuted. A lot of people were killed, churches were destroyed. And as I heard from the Lord, it was just what they reaped, what they've sown very, very much. And so in 28, it all stopped and Stalin came to power and it was mass and very horrible persecution. But before then, there was this union headed by Prakhanov, Ivan Prakhanov, and it was huge. They started a Bible school in Petersburg, which was a mission school. And 500 missionaries were sent by twos and they all planted churches everywhere they went. So I think this is a message to us that revival does not depend on the political situation with the hardest years in the Russian history, the latest Russian history. But the church was prospering at that time. Maybe someone was put into prison, but it was because once in a while everyone was, but it, it, in those years. But it was not, uh, churches could exist. They printed their newspapers openly. They had massive um, you know, meetings in the streets and whatever. So um, it's something that encourages me really that um, spreading of the gospel doesn't depend on these things. So coming to the modern years, um, Sergei will Sergei share a bit share. more about the uh, revival in the 90s. But I was surprised when a brother from another country, I mentioned the revival in the 90s. I was born again in that revival. He said, what revival was that? In what city was it? And I realized that he hasn't even heard about it. I said, it was in every city. It was in every village. It was churches planted all over Russia. And I'm a witness to that. I was born again in 93. And in our church, we had people saved every Sunday from 30 to 50 to 70 people every Sunday. We had uh, like 300, 200 people baptized. Our church grew in the first year from 600 to 1,000, just like that. And it wasn't just, um, there were a lot of missionaries and my brothers will speak more about that from the West, which we are very grateful for. But again, if the soil here wasn't ready, nothing would have happened. When I would speak to people on the train in those years, uh, people would gather around me to hear the gospel and they would cry and receive Jesus right then. I led a home group when I was six months in the Lord. Why? Because all my neighbors got saved. Not all, but all, all the people in the home group were, neighbor, were neighbors and I had to lead them. So um, with all that said, I would like to show you a video of um, Hudson Taylor's prophecy that the church in Russia knows and we pray it into being, we stand on it. And also Rick Joyner spoke about a great revival in Russia and Bob Jones. And I'll mention that a little bit and then we'll go on. Could you play that, Susan, please?
Hudson Taylor was well known for his journaling. He kept detailed accounts of many of his missionary and life experiences. We portray Hudson writing in England during the late 1800s. It was quite a meeting last night. Right in the middle of the message, the vision came. I know I stopped motionless for some time. I was not sure it really was the Lord. So when the vision stopped, I kept preaching. But then after some time, I saw the same vision again. I don't know how long I stopped the second time. I had to proclaim what I had seen. I have seen a vision. I saw a great war that will encompass the whole world. I saw this war recess and then start again, actually becoming two wars. God clearly revealed to Hudson Taylor World Wars I and II nearly 30 years in advance. In the vision, God gave him multiple verifiable events. I believe it was in part to establish validity and prepare us to believe the main point. After this, I saw much unrest and revolts that will affect many nations. God also gave indication to him of some of the numerous tensions and conflicts that have occurred since both world wars. We now know many specific places that revolts and unrest have arisen since the world wars. God was revealing major events as the world moved closer to the end of time as we know it. I saw in some places spiritual awakenings. The fires of revival awakenings have sprung up in numerous places around the world. We are currently seeing a growing number of cities, towns, regions that are in various stages of being transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe that all of the preliminary elements of the vision have taken place and we are awaiting the onset of the major element. Hudson then saw the fires of spiritual awakening descend and spread throughout all of Russia. In Russia, I saw that there will come a general, all-encompassing... Hudson Taylor was well known for his getting spread in many European countries. Then I saw an all-out awakening followed by the coming of Christ. This is such a profound matter. Russia, I spoke openly what I saw and many heard. I will leave the matter in the Lord's hand. Hudson Taylor's work is done. The things he saw regarding Russia seemed hard to believe prior to the late 1900s. Notable events have occurred since that now I am convinced more than ever that we are on the threshold of the climactic role of Russia and the final harvest of souls prior to Christ coming again. Praise God. So um, when in the 90s, the revival happened, I later thought maybe that was it. Maybe we missed it because it was very strong in the 90s, but closer to the end of the 90s, it started going down and the church became a bit lukewarm and a lot lukewarm and more into living for your, yourself. And I was thinking maybe that was the revival that Hudson Taylor prophesied. But then I realized that in his prophecy and the place where it got interrupted in the video, it says that it will spread to the nations of Europe and then through the whole world it will be like a worldwide revival. It will just be like fire. And uh, so in the 70 years of persecution in Russia under communism, um, our brothers and sisters were praying for this revival and God answered their prayers. So um, I believe that that was not it because the revival will spread out of Russia. It was like a preliminary thing that rose up the, the church. Most of the modern church in Russia w were born in the 90s because there were very few born again in the 90s. 
very, there were those who went through persecution, but um, most of them are, there are very few now left. And they're mostly Baptist and traditional Pentecostals. Um, and um, the majority of the body of Christ in Russia now were saved in the 90s and uh, don't know anything about persecution. We were people born in a revival. So <clears throat> I think the revival, well, the revival that Hudson Taylor was prophesying is yet to come because it will come not from abroad to Russia as it was in the 90s in many occasions, but uh, from Russia to other places. And also um, Natasha placed a link in the chat where you can find this prophecy and there are several others, including Rick Joyner and Serafim of Sarov, which was a, a Russian um, leader and a very respectable man, a saint from the old in the Orthodox Church that also prophesied this revival. But I'll read you a little bit from, the, from Rick Joyner's uh, prophecy that you'll find in the same place where this link is. And there are many other places you can just Google Rick Joyner prophecy about Russia. Russia will be the host of the greatest revival that the world has ever, has yet seen. Because of it, the soul of the nation will be transcendent, overcoming many of the great problems of the times and helping many other nations to do the same. Preceding this, Russia has a very difficult road ahead with some tragic events looming. Eventually the road will become smoother God's grace is extended towards Russia, and he is the one who put in Putin. Put in, Rick Joyner, it's a play of words. He noticed that, God showed him. Yeah. Um, interesting that it says, Germany, Poland, and Russia will grow in friendship to their mutual benefit and strengthening. Wow. God uses the worst things of the enemy to the the glory of his name, Jesus. Thank you. It is the destiny of Russia to precede the world in dealing with some of the problems that the whole world will face. I think this is very relevant uh, for now. Um, and uh, when Russia is standing on solid ground, the world will be safer and she will be able to help pull many other nations out of the quicksand. The potential of the Russian soul is a great treasure. Uh, the greatest threat to Russia is not the resurrection of communism, but the emergence of fascism. And we pray against that often. So, and I won't play the prophecy with uh, what Bob Jones said, but Natasha will, oh, there she did, uh, put it in the chat. It's about 43 minutes. And it's amazing. It's an interview um, of an Amer American pastor interviews Bob Jones when he was alive on earth. He's alive in heaven now. And um, he saw a red angel, a huge red angel. He, he said that he saw Archangel Gabriel three times in his life. And once he saw Archangel Michael. And this angel was the same rank as, as that one. And he was red. And he asked him, would you like to join the Russian Red Army? And Bob Jones said, no. And he said, well, I'll make it shorter. Look behind what's behind them. And it was an army of evangelists. It was an army of people who were carrying the gospel. And there was a red cross behind him. And the angel all was um, like blood and fire, which was the blood of Jesus and the fire. And Russia has been always or often uh, looked at as a threat. I believe personally, and I pray because I see the scheme of the enemy, because the enemy needs to have an external um, uh, enemy over there to redirect and aim people's minds and their fears in that direction. While be behind the scenes, something else is happening, which is global and doesn't belong to any nation, whether it's the US or, <clears throat> or Russia or Europe or anything. So it was like, um, a maneuver to look that way and to be afraid. Of course, there were things in history that were very wrong and we have been repenting for them many, many times. But I think 
those people who prophesied are prophets who uh, their prophecies have been proved many times in history and you can look them up yourself. And I'd like um, a little bit to do this, that Sergei will share about um, the 90s revival and I'll translate and Igor will share about Siberia and then we will worship and go into prayer. We'll be very brief. Sergey, давай. Да, слышно уже меня, да? Да. Видно какой-то клочок бумаги. Шалом всем. Хотел поделиться Шалом тем тебе. пробуждением, которое было. Ну, я like был его участником с 92 по 96. Like Вообще это пробуждение. About the revival that I was еще в советском. Since на Украине, и потом охватила быстро и Беларусь, и Россию, и после падения Советского Союза в 1991 году вот это пробуждение уже пришло в силу. Сергей, подожди, я переводить должна. И оно шло. Сергей, я переводить должна. Um, Revival, can you hear me? The revival uh, started in the Ukraine and then was passed on to uh, Belarus and then spread to Russia and everywhere all over the nation. And I, uh, Sergey is saying I was a part of that revival. Uh, в Сибири там чуть позже It was, it uh, уже после подожди it started in да, да. the west and went on to the east uh, and so some in some places it started in 91 in others in 93 or 4 но оно охватило все страны бывшего Советского Союза абсолютно каждый город каждый населенный пункт but it encompassed every single city and village everywhere where people lived in the former Soviet Union. И очень важно, что вот сейчас в церквях, но я сам это спрашивал и знаю от многих людей, большинство служителей это те, кто покаялся вот в эти годы начала 90-х. And I know that now most of the ministers in the churches and those who serve God are those who were saved in the 90s then. И действительно, десятки тысяч церквей родились вот за это время в наших странах. Tens of thousands of churches were planted in those years in our countries. Еще очень важно, что это пробуждение коснулось очень многих молодых людей. What's important is that this revival touched a very many young people. Вот и мне тогда было 20 лет, вот когда Бог ну, нас нашел. И таких было большинство в церкви, которым было от 20 до 25 лет. I was 20 years old when God found me. <coughs> And in our churches, most people at that time were from 20 to 25 years old. И мы очень много, ну, делились, свидетельствовали людям. Каждый, ну, молились за людей. We witnessed very much to people. We prayed for people a lot. И действительно, чудеса, они, ну, были частью этого пробуждения, исцеления и чудеса, ну, буквально происходили каждый день. And miracles were a part of that revival. Uh, we prayed and people got healed, and those healings and um, miracles were happening almost every day. Да, и еще что важно... Uh, очень часто приходили к Богу целые, ну, большие семьи, родные, близкие, друзья. 
То есть а, через одного человека ну, каялись очень много из его окружения. And what's important also, the people would come to the Lord, whole families together. One person would get saved in the family. And then their, all their relatives, their family, like parents and children, they would all get saved together. И люди uh, до этого, ну, большинство людей не знали Бога вообще. И вот этот духовный голод uh, вел к к быстрому росту. And before that, people, those people didn't know God at all. And this spiritual hunger helped them to grow very quickly, spiritually. They were growing fast. Growing fast. Maturing. Все, Maturing. Да, все были молодые, верующие, и часто uh, через полгода, год после ну, покаяния человек уже служил в церкви и иногда даже становился пастором. All the ministers were very young, the leaders in the church. Sometimes a person would be six months in the Lord or a year in the Lord, and he would already be a leader or a pastor. Many pastors were so young in the Lord. Вот когда, ну, где-то с 96 -го года, я-то в Беларуси, в Минске жил, начало это пробуждение ну, уходить, то уже с того времени мы стали молиться о том, чтобы Бог ну, просто вновь посетил нас. I was living in Belarus then, and uh, till 96, it was a full-blown revival, and then it started going down, and we started praying that God would visit us. Вот я за это время, ну, вот здесь, в России, встретил очень многих людей, которые последние, ну, наверное, 25 лет стоят в молитве и ожидают, что действительно Бог не закончил тогда, и что Он вновь могущественно придет и посетит эту землю. Вот эта молитва о пробуждении продолжается до сегодня. And here, even till today, I met a lot of people who've been praying for 20 or 25 years for God to finish what he started, to go on with this revival. Many people are praying for that. Да, но вот никогда не было столько много ожиданий, веры, молитвы, и, ну и дел веры, как вот uh, в этот последний год о пробуждении в России. And there's never been so much prayer for revival in Russia as this last year. Prayer and ex expecting expectations and things are starting to brew. Not that I know of. <clears throat> we have a lot of groups that are praying for revival now. A lot. I know many. А еще дальше, Сергей, что ты хотел сказать? Ну, все, да. That's all that Sergey wanted to say. I uh, get messages on WhatsApp from different groups, and there have never been so many. Like they spring up, uh, like we say, mushrooms after the rain. Uh, I have many friends who are intercessors, because for years those were my friends. And I think it's all over the world, probably. But uh, there's this... Um, how do you call it, this uh, activation of prayer. People are more engaging in things of the spirit, more in the intercessory circles. But of course, it starts with that usually and then spreads to the whole church. And we pray that it will. Now, um, um, Igor will share a little bit about Siberia. He lives there eastwards of Lake Baikal. Uh, which is farther than Siberia from the West. And I'd, I'll ask you to share a little bit. Are you good? Da. Hello, my brothers, my sisters, sisters from Baikal. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, Katya uh, a little bit told us about what happened in the end of the 19th, in the end of the 20th. Gotcha, uh, shared a little bit what happened in the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, Sergei поделился, что происходит сейчас. 
And Sergey shared about what's happening now. А я немножко расскажу чуть-чуть еще чуть пораньше, 300 лет назад, что было у нас. And I will share about what happened about 300 years ago here. Через нашего императора нашей страны были приглашены английские миссионеры. On the invitation of our emperor, some English, British missionaries were invited here. Из английского миссионерского общества. From the British Missionary Society. Для того, чтобы развивать христианство на востоке нашей страны. To spread Christianity on the east of our nation. Когда миссионеры приехали, их приняли очень, очень серьезно на уровне правительства государства. And when those missionaries came, they were received very seriously on the government level in Russia. Очень многие знатные люди дали обещание, что они будут поддерживать миссионеров финансово. Many people prop, uh, promised to financially support those missionaries. И 300 лет назад к нам сюда на Байкал uh, долго, сложно, где-то 4 месяца добирались миссионеры. And 300 years ago, some missionaries came way over there uh, to the Baikal Lake, which took them four months, and it was a very hard, hard road. Когда миссионеры приехали, они прожили здесь 30 лет, ну, около 30 лет. Those missionaries came here and lived here for over 30 years. Была проделана огромная работа. And a major work has been done. Они, во-первых, организовали школу для детей. They organized a school for children. В школе очень uh, хорошие давали предметы математику, географию, историю, языки. They taught children geography, math, and languages. Дети изучали от пяти до семи языков различных. And children would study from five to seven languages. These were Buryat people. Да. They're like Mongols. И, they are и not. Uh, они перевели. Они перевели Библию на старомонгольский язык. They translated the Bible into the old Mongolian language. Uh, на, на сегодняшний день uh, в нашем регионе около 50 церквей. As of today, we have about 50 churches in our area. И вообще вот у нас по Сибири практически в каждом регионе где-то 40-50 церквей в целом. And in Siberia, in every um, district area or region, there would be from 40 to 50 approximately churches, maybe more. Есть церкви, где более, несколько церквей, где более тысячи человек. And there are several churches that have over a thousand members. А в основном по городам церкви, в каждой церкви где-то 150, 200, 300 человек. And in most uh, churches in the cities, they would have from 150 to 300 people in the church. Церкви, которые находятся в деревнях, они где-то 25, 20, ну где 50 человек. The churches in villages would be like from 25 to 50 people. Сейчас практически везде есть церкви. Practically, there are churches everywhere now. И а, сегодня, ну вот где-то, наверное, лет пять, может быть, ну максимум десять лет назад. And about from five to ten years ago. А, многие, а, ну не многие, но некоторые церкви стали отправлять миссионеров в другие страны. Some churches started sending missionaries to other countries, other nations. Вот я, я лично знаю, что... Uh, есть миссионеры в Китае, из России, в Индии, в Африке. There are missionaries from Russia in China, in India, in Africa. В uh, Пакистане есть большое пробуждение сейчас. Русские миссионеры там работают. In Pakistan there is a big revival and there are Russian missionaries working there. Yeah. 
Лично вот мы, где я служу в церкви, мы на миссию ездим в Индию уже несколько лет. For my church, uh, including me personally, we go to India every year during several years now. Несколько раз ездили в Северную Корею для того, чтобы там молиться. And we went to North Korea several times uh, on intercession trips. Также с нашей церкви есть одна сестра, которая трудится миссионером во Вьетнаме. There's a sister from our church who is a missionary and uh, long term lives in uh, Vietnam. Поэтому сегодня церковь у нас здесь в Сибири, она довольно такая активная и много благовествует. So our church is pretty active now here in Siberia and it's spreading the gospel a lot. Спасибо. Thank you. And now Женя will lead us in worship, I think. Спасибо, Игорь, тебе. Женя, ты там? Катя, у нее с телефоном. Нет? Женя was supposed to lead worship, and I think her battery went down. Well, we have 19 minutes left. So let's just um, want to worship the Lord just like that, say some good things to him that he likes to hear, and then we can pr pray if you would agree, just to pray for the destiny of Russia to come into being. Mm. Lord, thank you. Thank you that uh, the destiny of the nations is in your hands. Lord, we thank you so much for your mercy and grace towards our nation. We thank you that you are a God that has so many sides and we have seen We've seen your judgments and we know the fear of the Lord, but we want to see your goodness in the land of the living here in Russia. We live here in Russia and this is the land of the living and we give you praise, you're a good God, you're a good father, you're a kind father, you're a loving father, you're a God that loves people, you're a God that created people, you're a God that sent a son to die for the people, Lord. And we give you praise for everything that we've shared now. It's you, Jesus, it's you. You were doing these great and marvelous things. And we believe that greater things are yet to come. That those men were speaking, Lord, by your spirit. They didn't make it up. Neither Hudson Taylor, nor Bob Jones, nor Rick Joyner. They didn't make it up that we will have a big revival. And you showed us a glimpse of that. And we praise you. It's the work of your hands. And we ask you to go on and continue. Don't stop. Revive us again. Revive us. We need your revival, Lord. We need it desperately in a time like this. Let every prophecy come true. So the microphone is open for you to just... Uh, Lord, I just want to praise you and thank you, Lord. Thank you that as we meet nation to nation, um, all our preconceived ideas about what nations are and who they are uh, falls away. It is such an, uh, an, a wonderful thing to have the Holy Spirit just uh, revive our minds and anoint our minds to actually see the truth behind each of the nations that that you Lord Jesus have people in every single nation and Lord we we just give praise and thanks and I just thank you Katia for just opening up these truths to us Lord it is so refreshing and I think it is wonderful to be able to experience this with you. A good journey, a good journey ahead. Amen. Uh, I really, um, <clears throat> this whole uh, session, Katya, has been so important for all of us to hear. Um, how God bypasses the political systems. And we are going to see a greater measure of that, I believe, in the days ahead as he calls forth his bride. 
amongst the nations. And we as watchmen are part of that whole process, I believe that God is raising up the ramparts of the watch across the nations to call forth the bride out of systems that would oppress us and keep us um, uh, silent. But God says, you know, your watchmen shall not keep silent day or night. And we will continue to pummel the doors of heaven until his kingdom is established on earth as it is in heaven. I just wanna declare over Russia, the Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. That means North Korea. That means the places of high oppression around Iraq. All the places that are trouble spots in our hearts. From a man's perspective, it's God who is looking down upon them today. He fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. No king is saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver any by its strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy. Father, I pray even now that you're a God of the masses, but you're the God of the individual heart that by these prayers today that you are touching someone who is in desperate need right now in places of oppression, that you are gonna lift their heads above the enemy, Father, and see the hope for which you are calling them. We send forth your blessing upon Russia today, Father, that you would strengthen them in might, that they would be encouraged in what you have spoken over them through these prophetic words. Father, we say in the nations, we need you, Russia. We need you. We see your strength. We see the strength that's rising out of Russia spiritually. And we thank you, Father, for these words that they will not return to you void. And we stand as watchmen to agree with heaven with what you have spoken in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. I want to read it again about these particular prophecies. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God. Hudson Taylor, Rick Joyner, and Bob Jones spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. May it come to pass what they said. Amen. We um, were supposed to worship, and Zhenya, her battery is gone, so she can't lead the worship. Um, let me ask Igor. Igor, у тебя есть гитара? Ты можешь прославление провести? Песню одну. У Женьки села эта батарея, ее нет. Я, да? Да. Можешь? Гитара есть? Надо сходить, есть, да? Сходи. We're going to worship the Lord with Igor. Будем с Игорем поклоняться. Давай, сходи. Because it's no good not to worship the Lord. If anyone else has a prayer, <laughs> go ahead while he's getting his guitar. Well, let, let's declare the Lord's name over Russia. Okay. Come on, let's popcorn it. Everybody, come on. Turn off your, get off, do, get off your just corner. Declare the name of the Lord over Russia. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Worship. You are a great God. The the people will come. All nations of Russia will follow. It says, thank you for these seeds. Water these seeds. Russia. Praise you, Lord. Blessing over you, Russia. Thank you, Lord. It never comes back void, but it accomplishes what it was sent for. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. You are great and worthy to be praised. Okay. Katya, are you ready? Uh, Ira wants to say something. Okay. Можешь перевести хорошо, я лучше на русском скажу. Okay. Ira is from our team. Uh -huh. Вы знаете, я уверовала в 92-м году. You know, I got, I got saved in 1992. В Санкт-Петербурге. In St. Petersburg. Моя духовная мама и папа из Австралии. 
My spiritual parents are from Australia. И они два года взращивали меня как лидера. They were growing me for two years as a leader. Во время, в 93-м и в 94-м году, во время конференции, я познакомилась с семьей из Канады. At a conference in 93-94, I met a family from Canada. И они пригласили меня в Торонто. And they invited me to Toronto. И очень-очень послужили мне. And they ministered to me very much. И тогда теперь микрофон включи. Да, да, да. Я почувствовала сердце отца. Алло. Да, да. Опять не слышно ее. Ира, пережила сердце отца в первый раз. Катя, я перевела. Все слышно? Зависаешь. Да, слышно, говори. Да, да, да. Я хочу просто поблагодарить Бога за то, что благодарить Бога за то, что люди из многих наций послужили лично. I want to thank God the people from many nations they ministered to our nation they um, served us and helped us and we bless you for what you have sown into us that it would come back to you abundantly, a hundredfold. We are very thankful, we're grateful for the foreign missionaries and everyone who served Russia. And Спасибо вам за ваши щедрые сердца. Thank you for your generous hearts. Yes, I agree with that. Our whole team wanted to express that we are very grateful. Спасибо, Ирочка, это очень нужно было. Давай. Хорошо, когда вместе в общении мы сольемся единой хвалой. Хорошо, когда в скорби и терпении Переносим с надеждой живой. Хорошо, если сердце свободно. Хорошо, если нету в нем зла. Хорошо, хорошо и спокойно. В той душе, где всегда тишина, хорошо, когда душой тело, мы вполне для Христа даем. Когда в битве мы смелы, когда действуем так, как твое, хорошо, если сердце свободно, хорошо, если нет в нем зла. Хорошо, 
I want to thank each person who prayed for Russia ever in your life. And I thank the Lord for all those people who have been praying for years faithfully. And when I was saved, I started meeting some of those people. And some came from the UK, some came from America. And I started hearing things like, I have been praying for Russia for 20 years, for 30 years. And so those people who came here, they expressed God's love, God's father heart of love to us. And I really thank, I wanna thank you, Father God, for those people. I thank you that there are very many who believe that things will change in Russia and their prayers have been answered. Praise you, Father God. And Lord, I ask you, Lord, that our prayers will be like a bridge from Russia to the West, from Russia to America, to uh, Europe, that our prayers will be connecting. We are one body and it will be connecting, connecting us. And Lord, the spirit of revival that you've given us, Lord, in the 90s, I thank you that you are reviving it in us and I ask you to bless our brothers and sisters from every nation, those who are present here and those who are not here with a spirit of revival, anointing of revival, Lord. It's so different from everything else. It's something you cannot confuse for anything. It's the spirit of revival. And we ask you together that will come. It will come upon every nation. It's not about Russia. 
that it will start here. There have been prophesying in every nation that it will start there because it will be worldwide. And we call, we call upon your name, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, send us the revival again. Send us the revival again, Lord. Send us the revival, Lord. We need you. Revive us. We need you. All nations need you. Nothing else will help except your revival in the situation in the world. And you promised us. You don't lie to us. You promised that the gospel will be preached in every corner in the whole universe. It will be preached around the world. And then you will come, Jesus. So will you start that again, Lord? We want to see it with our own eyes. And we believe that we will. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Well, Katya, this was a, a, an incredible session uh, on this revival history of Russia. I, we have a whole new understanding of how to pray for Russia and uh, value it a, a, in the kingdom. Um, I would like uh, to call on two people to close us off. Gail Levine as a, a Messianic Jew and um, Debbie Labinsky, who at 15, it sounds like you prayed for what you're hearing about today. So is Debbie there? And Gail, if you could pop in and close us off in prayer, please. Gail first and then Debbie. Good morning, sure. Father, we come before your throne, Lord God. Hmm. Thank you for the passion that we have heard this morning. Thank you for the heartfelt passion that has been shared. Let us hear the voice of the Lord that spoke this morning through Katya and the others, through the song, Lord God. Let us all be changed by what we heard today, Lord. And let us become intercessors for Russia, Lord God, in spirit and in truth, Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you for this call, for this, for this connection. Lord, thank you for bringing Jew and Gentile together as one new man. We give you praise for what you've done today, Lord, and ask that your presence be strong with Katya and her team. Bless them. We bless you in the name of Jesus Christ, today and forever. In Yeshua's name, amen and amen. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the, the breath of life that has been blown into my prayer life tonight and hearing after all this time, I never, ever heard that there was revival. I never heard that there was churches and Christians. And, Father, it has been so amazing to, to just hear how you have worked in this country, how your word never, ever returns void. Father, I thank you for these wonderful intercessors that stand for this country. Thank you for Katia and her team, Father, that continually and faithfully uphold you in this country. Father, nothing, nothing at all is impossible with you, nothing. And I thank you and I praise you for all that you have done and all that you are doing in this place that is so strange to us. Russia, yeah. It's not, it seems the whole other end of the world to Australia. But I thank you and praise you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Well, bless Russia. Thank you so much. It was a beautiful uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. Let's everybody just bless each other. Thank Have you. a wonderful day, evening, night, bless whatever it is for you. you. Bless you guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.